Welcome back. You're watching News X. I'm Mega Sharma, and we are on the rolling coverage of uh, the U.S. presidential elections. The voting is taking place, and we are tracking every bit of it for you. Now, as the Americans are queuing up to vote, Donald Trump has posted a fresh tweet on X. Tw uh, Donald Trump has said that it is uh, the most important day in American history, and that voter enthusiasm is through the roof. He has appealed for the voters to deliver their mandate, no matter how long it takes. So, visual on your screen of the Donald Trump tweet. On the very day that uh, the election takes place, remember he currently is in Florida after having finished his last campaign. He's arrived in Florida. He's going to be casting his vote over there in a few moments from now. Scott Faulkner is the former chief admin officer in the U.S. House of Representatives. He's the director of personnel for the Reagan campaign as well. Scott, uh, thanks for joining us on the telecast. And of course, messages that are being poured out uh, from the candidates, from the vice, uh, uh, vice president Kamala Harris. We've taken a look at uh, Donald Trump. He's just put out his, his, his appeal to voters once again to cast their vote, come out in large numbers. Uh, but how do you view at this point? It, there, there is, there is uh, you know, some uh, semblance of numbers that has been made, particularly with regards to the early voting. And, and what the trends are showing is that uh, a number of Democrat supporters have come out and voted in large numbers in, uh, in the early voting or, or during postal votes versus the, uh, the Republican supporters, people who want to vote for the Republicans, people who want to uh, vote for Donald Trump have are, are trickling in particularly on the election day which is today to cast their vote well yes Re republicans traditionally vote on election day this year has been slightly different because trump and the republican national committee have been urging uh, republicans to vote early and so they have voted early in record numbers the question becomes are the does it really matter in the end? In other words, if a person is going to vote anyway, if they vote a week ago versus today, or are they, by telling people to vote early, are they getting more people out that would otherwise not get out? So that's going to be an interesting thing to watch as these early returns come in. Right, absolutely. It's got also, you know, an example that has been set by Kamala Harris. She decided to cast her vote early and uh, she did that a couple of days ago. Uh, as, does this send out a message to the Democrats? Of course, because Donald Trump has been, you know, opposing postal votes, opposing early voting. In 2020 as well, he raised the point that, you know, he, it, it was a wave, it was a red wave uh, favoring Donald Trump. And as soon as the postal ballots and the early votes started to be counted, uh, uh, the trend then started uh, leaning towards uh, towards Joe Biden and, 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 and the Democrats. So, so you, do you think there's a contrast that has been put forth and, and, and Kamala Harris leading by example? I think the issue is that by having more early votes on the Republican side, you know, what happened in 2020 was there was this huge surge of, uh, of Democrat votes and Bi pro-Biden votes around midnight or two in the morning. And a lot of people thought that these were, you know, ballot stuffing. And so, but what happened was, is that in many states, they do not count the early votes until after they've counted the day's vote. And so that's this time around with so many more Republicans voting early, uh, that surge that was perceived in 2020 shouldn't be happening this time. So some of the conspiracy theories that came out in 2020 should be not be as, as strong this time around because of so many more Republicans voting early. And therefore, there won't be this sort of jump shift of Democrat votes uh, after uh, after midnight. Okay, all right. And, and talking about, uh, you know, the voting that is currently taking place and in contrast, do you, th do you think there's a trend uh, that is being carried forward because 2020, it was an outlier. It was the COVID year. Uh, people refused to step out of their homes and decided to cast their vote uh, either by postal ballot or they, you know, mostly by postal ballot. Do you think that trend is now continuing and, and, and people see, perhaps see the ease of casting their vote through postal ballot and then, and therefore they've carried on because there have been a number of trends that COVID has set, uh, uh, whether it is about going to the movie theaters or talking about shopping online versus going to the physical stores. So do you, do you also think this is a trend in, 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 in continuation? There's a couple states that have allowed online voting. Arizona is one of them. But I think, again, it's uh, 
most people are voting early. I mean, I, I voted a week or so ago. I stood in line about an hour. Uh, that seems to be the average around the country is that people are standing in line about an hour to uh, to vote early. Now, today, of course, is, is actual election day. I think that, I mean, we've had over 81 million early votes. Now, some of those were, uh, again, cast by mail, but most were people standing in line. And that's, and when you st- realize that usually around 160 million people vote in America, that's over half the people voted before today. And so when you start to look at the last minute uh, ads, the last minute endorsements, the last minute um, foibles or misstatements, uh, most of these people voted a week, two weeks, even three weeks ago. So a lot of this, uh, the uproars over what Trump said or, or Biden said or whatever else, People had already cast their ballots, so it'll be interesting to see how that all affects uh, the outcome. Right, absolutely. Um, also on the telecast with me, Cleo, Cleo, how do you view uh, you know visuals on our screens of, of a number of people coming out now and casting their vote? It is the East Coast that has uh, started uh, the voting process, the, the, you know, the first. And uh, uh, what do you think the trends uh, and, 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 and do you think a, a result will be possible to, to, to be declared uh, by the end of tomorrow? Because it doesn't seem likely because, you know, 82 million people, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very large number of people, considerable number of people who have cast their vote through, through, through postal ballot or they have come to the booths early on before the November 5th election. So, so the likelihood of uh, results coming out by end of November, November 6th, uh, uh, highly unlikely? It, it's well, it's technically, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mr. Fogg. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, you're going to have a number of bellwether states. I mean, the fact that Trump, this is the third time he's been on a presidential ballot. We can look at his point spread from 2016 and 2020. And so if, if he's tracking, you know, if he's tracking like 2016, he wins. If he's tracking like 2020, he loses. If he beats either point spread, he could be winning. And some of these early states on the East Coast are really critical because you have New Hampshire closes at seven o'clock our time and it's a small state. And so that could be a really interesting early bellwether. Uh, obviously, the you know, North Carolina, uh, Georgia, uh, Pennsylvania, I mean, these are all some of the key states that are in play and we may know about them early on or at least see how trump is tracking against his previous two cycles and that could give us an indication of what be, might be rippling across the rest of the country okay all right uh, cleo uh, coming to you now you know there's a lot of news trickling in and let, it's interesting because there has been an fbi warning that has been issued spoke speaking about fake news that voters should avoid polling because of imminent terror attacks that's the latest that we're getting uh, uh, you know there are these uh, untoward incidents maybe you know uh, uh, in incidents taking place in isolation in certain parts of america in fact uh, there was a few days ago uh, uh, during an early voting there was a chinese national who decided to cast his vote that was an illegal vote but that vote is now going to be counted as well so so how do we how do we tackle this uh, misinformation disinformation menace it's it's going to be a persistent uh, um, element of, of elections and, and other issues from now on because the stakes are so high, not just for the U.S., but for China and for Moscow or for Iran. Um, so, you know, one way to do it is you have much more informed debate all the way along and not just uh, on voting day. And I just, just note uh, on this issue of uh, counting whatever 100 plus million votes that actually it's it's over 50 different districts that are voting um, in their own way. So it's not like one big election. It's more um, different states that have to uh, tabulate the votes in their own state. And a big state like Florida manages to get it done uh, on election day. So it is definitely technically possible for all the votes to be counted um, on November 6th. Um, but that did not uh, but, happen. That uh, did not happen in the 2020 elections. You know, it took about six, no, seven days for the... For the, for the vote for all the votes to be counted and the election result to be declared it, I, I, th- that's the point the point is that if it was uh, desirable it would be technically possible uh, but for whatever reason uh, states tend to do it in their own different ways um, but it, it's it's not I mean the in, Indians vote in much larger numbers on single days yeah uh, and manage to get it done
Right, absolutely. No, that, that's interesting. Let's, uh, you know, I have to address this. Donald Trump is expected to cast his vote in Florida's Palm Beach very soon and he should vote at his home precinct that is precinct number 5604 for which the voting site is the Morton and Barbara Mandel Recreation Center at 340 Seaview Avenue. Following this, he is also expected to host a watch party in the Palm Branch Convention Center. So, uh, Cleo, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump finished his uh, last, uh, the last of his campaigns were finished earlier in the day. He flew into Florida and he's uh, set up his base over there, all ready for the watchathon. Uh, yes, he has, and, and I would expect that Vice President Harris uh, uh, has as well. Uh, she voted early, as you mentioned. Um, so now everybody's just waiting for, obviously, the votes to come in. As Mr. Faulkner said, there'll be certain key states that people will be watching very closely, in particular Pennsylvania. Uh, and because each of these states run their own elections, uh, it's very important to understand the dynamics of those involved. So the, the governors in the states have a very large say in how the elections are run. Um, it's uh, entirely likely that the governor of Pennsylvania, uh, Josh Shapiro, may himself wish to be a presidential candidate in four years. Um, so uh, it, 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 it's interesting to, to think about how that might play into um, how quickly the votes are counted and how efficiently and transparently uh, it's done. One school of thought is that he would like a very clean election and the results quickly, um, especially if it looks like uh, Trump would win, ironically, um, because that would, um, if, if Harris is elected, then that makes it more difficult for him to run in four years. So there's the macro level of the analysis, but there's also uh, state specific analysis. And, it, and who wins the Senate and who wins the House is going to be incredibly important for uh, the agenda of any presidential uh, winner. So that's also something that's very important to watch. Okay, all right. We're getting to know more information right now. Visuals on your screens of the people voting. This is uh, Palm Beach in Florida, the place where Donald Trump is uh, slated to cast his vote uh, very, very shortly. We're also getting to know that the, according to numbers that have been posted by the State Board of Elections, over a third of registrars, registered Marylanders have uh, cast their vote by mail or by early vote ahead of the election day. Now, over 1.6 million voters who cast their ballot represented over 39% of Marylanders. Now, in uh, in-person uh, voting has now commenced. So, that's uh, uh, another information uh, pouring in. We are getting to know, listen in to what uh, some of the voters uh, have to say after they cast their vote. Uh, I'm here first thing in the morning. I think it's very important to uh, whatever you're doing today, uh, if you haven't voted, get out and vote. It's um, a right that not everybody in the world gets, so you have to take advantage of it. It's an election like no other, and if you have any thoughts of not voting, today is the day to change your mind. You can do voting today, even if you're not um, registered to vote. My name's Lisa Grogan, and I think it's very simple. We just need a change in this country, period. I'm um, here. All right, so those, those are some of the voters, enthusiastic ones, and appealing for their fellow countrymen, fellow voters to come out and cast their ballot. Now, we're also getting to know that there are two polling locations in western Pennsylvania's uh, Allegheny County that are experiencing delays. Uh, they experienced delays Tuesday morning, but they are now operational, is what we're getting to know. In the first location, the borough of Whitehall, the judge of elections, was late at a polling site, but they have now arrived, and the site is open and running. Meanwhile, in the second location, the Pittsburgh Lincoln Place the neighborhood, the sheriff was retrieving the poll book from the judge of elections. He has now taken it to the poll site and polling has resumed. So, obviously, you know, these, uh, uh, these developments, these anomalies, some irregularities taking place, God, these are these are routine. This happens in, 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 in all elections and it, it's universal. I mean, whether the elections happening in India or they're happening in America or, or in Canada or in Australia, these, these, these anomalies, these uh, incidents do happen. But till the time, it does not turn into, a, 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 you know, an incident of violence. Uh, I think all is under control. Can you hear me, Scott? Yes, right. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, election day, there's always variables. You have weather issues. I mean, you got snow in some parts of the country, rain in the other parts. I mean, some people 
literally uh, will not vote if they have to stand in line in the rain. So you've got so there's all sorts of variables like you're mentioning. Box, you know, uh, machines break down, uh, personnel for uh, viewing and uh, judging the election uh, show up late. I mean, that's why, again, a lot of people, I mean, I've always advocated for early voting going back well over two decades because on election day, you know, you could have a child sick, you could be sick, you could have your car could break down. I mean, any number, uh, crisis at work. I mean, the, there are too many variables to risk the last minute to uh, to go out and vote. So early voting is a good thing. And thankfully, the Republicans are catching up this year with uh, both Trump and the Republican National Committee officially endorsing and urging early voting. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, to see how the pattern plays right. out now that uh, we have much more early votes on the Republican side than has been historic. Right. Uh, you know, Scott, uh, an important aspect that has been highlighted by Cleo, you know, a country of uh, uh, crows of people, 1.5 billion people who are reside in India and they cast their vote in large numbers and, you know, you're, the counting process is completed by the end of the day. Uh, why cannot United States of America follow the same uh, policy? Well, like uh, uh, our colleagues uh, said that Places like Florida are very efficient. Other states are uh, ridiculously inefficient. Now, how much of that is just incompetence? How much of it is intentional? Uh, I mean, that's, an, that's for people to speculate. But the key is, is that the way our Constitution is set up, we're a federal system. Every state has its own governing process. Every state has its own election process. As you look at the early voting situation, states like Pennsylvania uh, vote started voting well over a month ago. Other states only have a few days of early voting. And so some states are, are using paper ballots that get, get scanned in. Some states have touch screens. That, uh, uh, so every state does it differently. And I think that's a strength in, in terms of, uh, while it creates variation in the process one way, it'll, it allows each state to try something different and best practices ultimately prevail over the long haul. Okay. All right. We are also getting uh, more information. Now. According to reports, the American intelligence officials have maintained that Russia is seeking to hurt the confidence in the election and undermine the campaign of Vice President Kamala Harris. However, in Moscow, a spokeswoman for the Russian Foreign Ministry has claimed that Russia does not care who wins the presidency because of a bipartisan consensus in the United States on confrontation with our country. The statement underscores Moscow's change in tone from 2016 when the Russian officials were openly cheering for Donald Trump. All right, that's interesting. Well, Cleo, how do you have to, yeah, yeah, let's, let's hear it from Cleo. I'll come back to you. Scott, uh, Cleo, Cleo how, do you, how do you react to this? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think this is not new. It, it, I, think, I think this could, could be a repeat of the 2020 elections as well. Allegations being made that Donald Trump was colluding with the Russians uh, in the election, meddling by the, alleged meddling by the Russians in the, in the, in the uh, American elections. Is this any different? Uh, does this hold any water? It doesn't well, hold anymore. The, I mean, go ahead. So, it, so those, uh, those, uh, uh, those, that story was uh, part of a, an influence operation uh, that uh, did not do credit uh, to uh, many uh, high-ranking former U.S. officials who uh, in, endorsed it. It was subsequently debunked. Um, and it, it, this, we are in as in an active political warfare phase, not just. Uh, from China and Iran and uh, Russia, but also uh, within our own countries. And the, we, we saw it uh, come up during the Indian elections as well. Uh, stakes are very high all around. And this is just, this is the operating environment now. Um, so I think that uh, you know, discussing these things factually uh, and getting to to the bottom of them with clarity and alacrity um, is uh, is what's urgent and uh, gets picked up uh, like that the, the Russia collusion story um, just as much ink needs to be spent on um, uh, saying what the outcome of the of the research into it the investigation into it came came out with as went into uh, spinning it up 
um, there is a, the, the mental battle space is one that's being highly contested right now. And um, the uh, outcomes of ceding that space to a malign actor um, has very serious repercussions, not just in the United States, but globally. Okay, also information pouring in, actually before that, we are getting to know that the voting machines are down in Cambria County in Pennsylvania and uh, because of that, the voting time has been uh, extended uh, after, uh, uh, you know, there's a software malfunction reportage uh, that has uh, been uh, reflected, that has been highlighted. We're also getting to know that uh, Barack Obama, a Democrat and the former President of America has urged people to vote stating that it shows the world who the Americans are and what they stand for. Listen to what he said. You need to get out there and vote. So tell your family, talk to your neighbors, make a plan, go to the polls with your friends and vote. Vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Head to IWillVote.com to look up your polling place today. Folks, this election is going to be close. In some states, just a handful of votes in every precinct could decide the winner. So you need to get out there and vote. So tell your family, talk to your neighbors, make a plan, go to the polls with your friends, and vote. Vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Head to IWillVote.com to look up your polling place today. Okay, so that's the message from Barack Obama, loud and clear, vote for Kamala Harris, vote for Tim Watts. So, all right, uh, we also get to know that the FBI has warned against fake news clips. And the FBI officials are saying that there are unknown people circulating clips using FBI insignia and voters are being warned to avoid polling. The FBI has said that because of the imminent terror attacks, uh, this precaution has uh, been taken uh yes getting in scott uh, back into the conversation and scott how do you how do you know uh, you know the message that is loud and clear uh, a strong one uh, b by barack obama obviously the two-time president of america a strong figure a well-known well-loved figure uh, a message that goes out to the people on the day of the election uh, b you know uh, uh, endorsing kamala harris and tim waltz well i mean it's not a surprise. I mean, Obama was one of the ones behind the scenes who pushed Biden aside so Harris could become the nominee. So, I mean, that's not a surprise at all. I mean, and again, uh, I think Americans don't really worry that much about endorsements. I think that they're looking at their, uh, you know, what, what they just spent the other day on uh, groceries, uh, what they spent at the uh, gas station uh, to fill up their car and other vehicles. I think they're worried about crime and uh, border security. So there's a lot of issues out there that, uh, you know, celebrity endorsements, endorsements by your party leaders for your party nominee, uh, people crossing over, whether it's uh, the Republicans who trash Trump or the Democrats like Telsey Gabbard and uh, uh, others that have uh, moved over and Elon Musk to, uh, to Trump. Uh, you know, I think that's a lot of background noise. I think it's mostly people are looking at, uh, they vote their wallet, they vote their security, uh, they vote their peace of mind. And that, I think, will tell the tale more than who's lining up with who at the, I mean, the media loves it. But I think in general, it's people look at their life and say, you know, which candidate is going to improve my life, improve my security, improve my ability to make ends meet uh, in my family budget. And those are the things that are going to be uh, telling the tale today. Okay, absolutely. On that note, I'm out of time. I thank both of you for joining me on the telecast. Stay tuned on NewsX and I ask both my panelists also uh, to stay back on the other side of this commercial break. There are more updates, uh, there are more developments, uh, there are minute by minute updates that we are keeping track of uh, on uh, the US presidential election day. Thanks for watching. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.